Hello everyone, today we have a new product to fix the 6.5 inch medallion smart display. This display was used on many boats including Taiga, Malibu, Mastercraft, Ski Nautique and sea -Doo. And as you may know, they are prone to delamination causing a bubbly appearance and many touch response problems. This is caused from the delamination of the glass to the LCD. Over time and exposure to sunlight, it'll separate and peel away and you can see that sticky glue there that causes all these problems. The original design used a liquid adhesive, which tends to delaminate over time and exposure to sunlight. It's not a great choice for marine environments. After two years of testing and development, we have released the new MTC 6A and 6B, which is the replacement panel that fixes the delamination and touch response problems on your factory medallion smart displays. Here we can see the, the unit It has a oleophobic coating which means no fingerprints. It's going to feel very smooth to the touch. It's also got a nice anti-glare filter which makes it easier to see in direct sunlight when you're out on the water. We use 3M marine grade tape to bond this new panel to your factory plastic housing. This project required a new custom digitizer panel that was made, as well as new LCD drivers, as you can see in the photos. These parts are bonded with OCA film, which is the same as your cell phone and is a much more durable design. You can choose the mail-in service where you send your unit in and we repair it with the new panel, send it back. Otherwise, if you're handy mechanically, you can choose the do-it-yourself option. If you choose the do-it-yourself path, here's a list of the materials you'll need. It should take about 60 minutes. Make sure you select the MTC 6A or 6B depending on your original design. You can find that at mtcscreens.com. During this project, you'll be using heat, sharp objects. Really use common sense, be careful. If this seems out of your skill set, just use the mail-in service to reduce the risk and damage to your unit. And again, make sure you order the correct version. All right, we're gonna start with using your heat gun and just warm up the perimeter of the glass. This is kind of a preheating step. Kind of go around and just get the, uh, the outer black area of the glass nice and warm. We'll apply more focused heat later to actually break the bond of the double-sided tape. But for now, just kind of do a preheating step. It's very important to avoid breaking the glass during this part. Once the glass breaks or cracks, it becomes much more difficult to remove more dangerous, etc. So try and take it slow, have patience here. You're gonna apply some heat to the black part of that glass and try and focus it to warm it up to the point where you can't touch the glass for more than three seconds. That's probably a good sign it's, it's warm enough. At that point, you can kind of slip your little uh, plastic or metal pry bar inside the gap. Apply more focused heat if you need to, but the pry tool should slip in there and it should be able to cut through pretty easily. If it's not cutting through easily, it's probably a sign that it's not warm enough. So use a little bit more focused heat on that section. So the logic here is to kind of go through a section, warm it up, continue on, warm it up as you go around. Take it slow, have patience. If you try to rush it and try to cut through um, glue or tape that's not that's not warm enough, it's, it'll crack the glass, so be careful with that. So here in this part, now it's the right side, focus more heat on that right edge. Slip your pry tool between it and just keep going slow. Heat it up and cut through just like before. Thank you. 
All right, now the LCD panel is freed up from the tape bond, and this is successful as the glass has not cracked. We can kind of peel it away slowly, don't go too far because there's a lot of connections. You can see the glue here that's all leaked out that causes the, uh, the touch response problems. So don't put too much tension on those wires. The first wire we're going to disconnect is the white driver plug. There's no lock, it just kind of is a friction fit into that connector. Just grab it and pull it away to release it. Now gently tilt the panel to the right. Really avoid putting stress or tension on these wires. We don't want to cause any damage. The first thing you can undo is the pink and white power wires. Those are kind of held in place with little retention clips, little latches. Unlock those and free up the pink and white wires on both sides. That'll give you more space. The clips might look slightly different from model to model. Now you can unlock the digitizer cable. This is a very delicate connector. We don't want to damage it. So here's an up close video of how it works. Unlock that connector and pull the ribbon cable out. It's a flat connector. Once that black collar is out, it's unlocked. When it's closed, it's locked. They're unlocked just like that. Here's the alternate version, the 6B. This is the only difference really is this connector, so you can unlock that. It's, it's similar, but just a little bit smaller, a little bit different. That's how the 6B connector works. All right, now you'll see a foam tape there that kind of secures the connectors. Just remove that temporarily, pull off these pink and white power cables. There's no latch, this is just friction fit. Sometimes they're in there pretty good. Just give it a little bit of force, pop that connector loose, and separate it. Now your old display panel can be removed fully and uh, set aside. This next step is important. We want to remove the old tape and make sure you have a nice clean bonding surface for your new panel. This tape comes off uh, pretty cleanly most of the time. If you pull it horizontally and pull it, like, kind of stretch it, it will release the bond and it comes off pretty good. Sometimes it doesn't. Use your heat gun if you have to to kind of warm up that glue and break the bond. But as you can see from this video, I'd say 90% of the time it comes off pretty clean if you use this technique. Just kind of stretch it like that. Sometimes it'll break, but just keep, keep going with this concept of stretching it and pulling it away to have it pull off cleanly. On this example, on this video here, you can see there was a little bit of glass breakage on the corner. If that happens, just kind of work around it, uh, pull the, the glass pieces away carefully. Obviously, it's sharp glass. Don't touch it with um, too much pressure. And now you can use isopri isopropyl and microfiber towels or paper towels with your 90% or higher isopropyl to remove the, tr the glue residue. The glue residue should really melt with the isopropyl. It works pretty well. This, the idea is here is be very thorough. Don't stop until all the residue is removed. You need a pretty clean surface with no dust and no uh, remaining glue to get a good bond. And I should note that we only really need to remove the glue from the flat surface where the, where the new panel is going to mount. Sometimes glue leaks down the, the, the vertical surface like you can see here. Just leave that alone. There's no need to mess with that. Nothing's going to stick to that. All right, just a couple notes for the next step for the panel install. Very, very important to make sure the orange ribbon digitizer connector is fully inserted and fully locked. Otherwise, we're gonna have problems with touch response. And be very careful to not pinch the wires in the LCD tape. So with that in mind, 
we can get started here. The first connection is going to be the pink and white connectors. They go in just like how they were removed. The flat side of the connector is upwards. And it just kind of snaps or clicks right into place. Make sure you get these fully locked in. The top part of the panel goes to the top connector and the bottom to the bottom connector. This bottom connector can be a little difficult to access, so you can sort of pre-bend those wires to, to help reach it better. And once you get it in the connector, it should snap right into place when it's aligned. Alright, there we go. Two of the four connectors are complete. Now tuck those pink and white wires back in their retention clips. Once again, your style clip might be slightly different. It might be white. It might look a little bit different, but the idea is to put the wires in that securing area. This is how the 6B version looks. It's a little bit different. Alright, so now your pink and white wires are connected and the retention is, is in place. We'll move on to the most important part of the entire job, making sure the digitizer ribbon is all the way in. So let's take a look at this. That's the locked position. We want it to be in the unlocked position, just like that. Slip that ribbon cable in. We're looking to put it in the flat area all the way in, and you can hold it in place while you lock that black locking clip. It'll rock left and right, but you want a nice, even lock, fully locked and straight to make sure it's properly inserted. This is the easiest part to mess up of the job, so. And this is the alternate 6B version, how that ribbon cable inserts. Alright, so now we want to align the right side of the new panel with the right side edge of the plastic housing. A couple notes here, don't pinch the digitizer ribbon cable, it's kind of in that same area, so tuck it in the, the plastic box if you have to, just really try to avoid pinching it on that lip. And also don't remove the, the tape backing film yet, leave that connected. We're going to do a test fit up and test to make sure everything's good before um, securing the panel with tape. So there we go, that's installed without any pinching of the digitizer ribbon. We can see that the, the plastic backing film is still in place. So with the right side kind of sitting there, reach in, grab that white driver plug, and snap that back into its connection. It kind of just pushes into place, there's no connector, it's just a friction fit, so just kind of push it until it stops. Make sure it's nice and even, but you don't need to push too hard. We'll get another look at it here. All right, so again, now your LCD panel is sitting in the plastic tray. The backing film is still intact, so we're just gonna kind of temporarily secure that panel to your plastic housing with some blue painter's tape or some scotch tape or similar, just so it doesn't fall out during your test. The reason why we're doing this here is because in case one of the connectors was incorrectly done or missed, it's gonna be much harder to uh, fix that if it was secured with tape, with the double-sided permanent tape. So this is a temporary fit up. Take the unit and put it in your boat Test your functions, make sure everything's responding good like it should be, and if that's all well, pull the unit out, remove your temporary tape, gently lift up on your LCD panel. 
It doesn't need to go more than a quarter inch, half an inch above the surface with one hand. Kind of balance it like that. You can reach in, grab those little blue tabs, and expose the tape while it's still floating above the, the panel. The right side, top, bottom, and then the left side. So now the tape's exposed. As soon as it touches the plastic, it's going to be very sticky. Align your right edge. Again, avoid that digitizer wire. Don't pinch it. All right, so now you can press the perimeter to really tightly bond that new panel to your housing. Get it nice and tight and uh, clean up the final traces of any residue or any fingerprints that might exist on that panel with some isopropyl and a, and a paper towel. And that is everything. You should be all set. Your panel's tested, installed, ready to go. Congratulations, you did it. You can support this cause by posting on Facebook groups, telling your friends at the marina, forums that there is now a permanent low-cost solution to the common marine touch control screen issues. Thank you for making this project possible, and do not hesitate to contact me directly if you ever have a problem. I'm here to help. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.